Hello everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. Today is all about resetting the house and getting ready for the week ahead. <laughs> but first I'm going to need a little more caffeine this morning because even though I'm not doing a lot of cleaning today, I still have a lot to do. We're still working on the bathroom and DIY projects are messy and time consuming and physically demanding, which makes it hard to keep up with the rest of my life. So sacrifices have to be made and my usual routines get interrupted in the name of progress. So to get back on track, I always start with my morning routine. And if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I don't start a load of laundry unless I have time to fold the clothes that are already in the dryer. <laughs> and I only fold one load of laundry a day, but things don't always go according to plan. And now there's a pileup in the laundry room. And I got most of the laundry folded, but I still have a pile of t-shirts to fold along with a few things that I hung up to air dry. And then I have another load of laundry waiting for me in the dryer. So I could easily finish folding the darks and get them put away and leave the rest of the laundry for the following day, but there's already another load waiting to go in the dryer. So if I take a few minutes to fold the t-shirts, then I can get back on schedule. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming. Golden, I'll call it golden. golden. Golden, golden things. in spring, rainbow trout and hummingbird wing, golden, I follow the golden, golden, golden things, gold hair, gold rings. Whenever I enter a room, I try to put away everything in that room before I leave, and I try not to leave the room empty-handed, but it can be hard to stay on track when there's so much to do, and it's easy to start bouncing all over the house and never make any real progress. But getting the laundry folded and put away is the top priority today, so I want to take the time and empty the laundry basket before I leave the room. But I also need to get all the tools picked up and put away, so I need to decide 
decide if I should clean up this room or put all the tools away, and there's really no wrong answer to that one. There are a list of rules that help keep the house tidy. Never leave the room empty-handed, the one-minute rule, the five-minute rule, the one-touch rule, <laughs> and all these rules save time and keep the house tidy so that things don't pile up and become an all-day project like I have today. But which rules apply when the house is already a mess? And according to the one minute rule, if it takes less than a minute to do, then you should do it right away. And the only problem with that one is that there aren't enough minutes in the day. But I know it will only take a minute to make the bed and another minute to pick up the tools and then this room will be put back together again. But it will take much longer to put all the tools away and I still have a load of laundry to fold and the rest of the house to take care of. So I'll gather up all the tools and drop them off in the garage and I can put them all away at the same time. My husband always likes to buy the same Kirkland socks from Costco, but every time he buys a new package, they seem to get shorter. <laughs> and so now we have the same white socks in three different sizes, and somehow I always end up with one or two socks that just don't match. And anytime I have socks that don't match, I just put them in the drawer until I find the missing socks. The laundry is folded and put away, the bed's made, and I still have a little bit of cleanup left to do in the kitchen. I have a few dishes in the sink that I need to wash, but I need to take a minute and clear off the countertop. There's a few paint samples along with today's mail and a few random receipts that need to be put away, and mail is the biggest source of paper clutter, so I try to take care of it before it has a chance to pile up. So as soon as it comes into the house, I sort through it and pull out any junk mail and toss it straight into the recycle bin and I file away anything that I need to keep or take care of.
Paperwork is not my favorite thing to do, but it's much easier to manage if I just take a few minutes each day to file everything away so that I can get rid of the paper clutter. When I was a kid, my grandmother cleaned up the kitchen every night after dinner, but she always waited to wash the dishes the next morning before work. <laughs> and she told me it was better to work smarter, not harder. She didn't have a dishwasher to do the work for her, so rather than spending the extra time scrubbing all the dishes, she would fill the sink full of hot soapy water and let the dishes soak overnight. And in the morning, all she had to do was rinse them off and let them dry. And we load up the dishwasher throughout the day, but I try to wash up the dishes that we need to wash by hand after dinner and that way they have a chance to dry overnight and I can put them away in the morning but there are times when I will let them soak in the sink overnight and take care of them in the morning. There's still a lot more that I need to pick up around the house, but I need to clear a space in the garage so that I have somewhere to put things. And I know a lot of people assume that I'm compulsive about cleaning, but that's definitely not the case. It's very easy for me to put things off and let things pile up because it's not the mess that bothers me. What does bother me is having to waste time running around the house looking for something that I need or having to spend hours at a time just to get back on track. But it's also a lot more work to clean a messy house so it may seem a little backwards that there's not a lot of cleaning on my list today. But once the house is picked up, my weekly cleaning routine will be much easier to manage. Most of the tools and supplies that we've been using have been put away, but there's still a few things left inside the house, so I just need to walk through the house and pick up anything that's left and get it put away. Of course, there's still a lot more work to do in the bathroom and I'm sure we will need some of the tools that we have out, but there's also a lot that we can put away and it's just easier to clean everything up and get it put away so that we can start fresh on the next project. If I can't 
always get questions about this blanket. We found it at Costco a few years ago, so unfortunately I don't have a link for it, but we use it to cover up the sofa and I swap it out with a clean one every week and I wash the blanket as soon as I pull it off the couch so that it's ready for the next time. Whenever I'm overwhelmed and there's so much to do that I don't know where to start, I think about what I need to do today that will make my life easier tomorrow. <laughs> so getting caught up with the laundry and getting the house back in order was high on my list, but meal prep is another thing that will make my life easier for the next week. So I don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen today, but I still need to make a few things to have on hand for busy days. And I always have a few go-to recipes that are quick and easy to prepare and don't take a lot of time to clean up. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, because I've always been told that things will be Banana bread is one of those recipes that I always have on repeat because we always have bananas that we need to use before they go bad. And I've shared this recipe a few times, but I'll be sure to link that recipe in the description box. And muffins are always my go-to for an easy breakfast on the go. And they're perfect with a green smoothie in the morning. And because I make this recipe so often, I measure out the dry ingredients in advance because it helps to save time with prep and it makes the cleanup easier. This recipe is gluten-free and paleo-friendly, but there are no preservatives, so they will only last a day or two at room temperature, but they will last up to a week in the fridge or a few months in the freezer. the pieces back together yeah you you take all my wrongs and make them better Whenever I'm in the kitchen, I try to clean up as I go. Dishes can pile up quickly, especially when I have a big meal prep day. So I load the dishes into the dishwasher as soon as I'm done using them. And that way I don't run out of room to work and I don't have a pile of dishes to take care of when I'm done. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Making me wanna try forever I feel so free Oh my sweet baby When I don't have a lot of time for meal prep, I look for simple recipes that practically cook themselves, which is why I like to make things like soups, stews, and chilies. They're easy to prepare and they are perfect meals to have in the fall when the weather starts to cool down. So I'm making a big pot of split pea soup today. It makes a great freezer meal and there's only a few ingredients, so this soup doesn't take much time to put together. I just need to saute the veggies and the rest of the soup practically cooks itself.
This recipe does call for celery, but I had to leave it out because I just don't have any in the fridge today. So I just substituted a few extra carrots and onions for the celery, and you'd never know it was missing. I reorganized all the spices earlier this year, and I'll add the link to that video in case you missed it, but I found a hack to create a more uniform look in the pantry without having to spend money on new jars. I realized that most of the lids on the spice jars are interchangeable, even if they're from different brands. So I've been saving the lids from the empty spice jars, and before I recycle the empty bottles, I keep the lids so that I can change the color on the new bottle. Once all the ingredients are in the pot, all I have to do is set the timer and let it simmer for about an hour. And I like to use the cooktop to cook this soup, but you could use a crock pot or even an instant pot. But because this is a one pot meal, there's not a lot to clean up. I love to make meals that cook once and eat twice, and if they cook in one pot, that's even better. <laughs> and sheet pan dinners tick all those boxes, and I don't usually follow a recipe, I just use whatever I happen to have in the fridge at the time. And today I have sweet potato, carrots, and asparagus to use, and I pulled out some sausage I had in the freezer to go with it. But whatever veggies I use, I like to add onions and peppers to add just a little bit more flavor. But I don't have any bell peppers left in the fridge, so I'm just using onion today. And I lined a large baking sheet with parchment paper to help with the cleanup. And once I add the veggies, I'll coat them with a little oil and I'll season them. And today I'm just using oregano and a little blackened seasoning. Oh, when I look deep into your eyes 
potatoes and carrots will take longer to cook than the asparagus and the sausage, so I'll put them in the oven first, and I'll set a timer for 20 minutes. Muffins are better at room temperature, so I'm just going to leave a few muffins out and I'll put the rest in the fridge. And if I need to, I can always put them in the microwave for about 30 seconds to take the chill off. I have 20 minutes to clean up and chop up the rest of the ingredients for this meal. The asparagus has already been washed and prepped so all I need to do is chop it into bite sized pieces and I'll do the same with the sausage. The asparagus will need to cook for about 15 minutes and the sausage is fully cooked so I just need to heat it through and you may notice that the sausage is still frozen but that will help it cook slower and even out the cook time. I wanted to make enough to have another meal this week and when you're roasting veggies you don't want to overcrowd the pan but I also didn't want another pan to clean <laughs> so I just used the same pan that I used for the muffins and sausage has a ton of flavor so I'm just going to use a little salt and pepper to season the asparagus and once the timer goes off I'll put the pan in the oven and cook everything for another 15 minutes. Once the soup is finished cooking, I just turn off the heat and leave it on the stove to cool down. And once the ham bone has cooled down enough to touch, we cut the meat off the bone and add it back into the soup. This recipe makes about six two cup servings, so I can leave a few servings in the fridge to eat later this week and I'll put the rest in the freezer. That's all for today. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.